Hi and welcome to another video from James Dobb Stories. If you're enjoying the content on my channel, then check out my Patreon page for amazing audiobooks, including Harry Potter, David Walliams, The Hunger Games, and much, much more. You're welcome and thank you. Now, let's get into today's video. Hi and welcome to part two of Lily Alone by Jacqueline Wilson, continuing from chapter three. To tell you the truth, I thought she'd be back early. I was pretty sure this Gordon wouldn't turn up. I thought Mum would wait up in town a while, maybe have a drink to cheer herself up and then come back home once she knew the kids would be in bed. I'd make her a cup of tea and give her a cuddle, and if she cried I'd wipe her eyes and tell her he wasn't worth it. I'd act all grown up, like I really was Mum's mate. I was almost looking forward to it, but Mum didn't come back. We watched telly and then we played a long, boring game of Snap. It got especially tedious because Baxter wanted to change the rules and shout a rude word beginning with S whenever two cards were the same. And then Pixie kept shouting it too, and we couldn't shut her up. It was hard work getting them calmed down and into bed. Pixie was still sleepily mumbling the rude word when I tucked her up in her cot. Had to chase Baxter all around the flat before I caught him and hurled him on top of the mattress. And then I had to lie on top of him to keep him in there before he calmed down at last and went to sleep clutching his new forklift truck. Bliss went to bed without making a fuss, but when I looked into our bedroom half an hour later, she was still wide awake. I let her get up again and come in the living room with me. Come and cuddle up on the sofa, Bliss. I'll tell you a story if you like, I said. She nuzzled up to me obediently, tucking her head neatly under my shoulder. She was always lovely to sit with. Baxter was a nightmare, wrestling and kicking all over the place, and Pixie had become a hopeless fidget too, unable to sit still for two seconds. You are my absolute favourite, Bliss, I said, putting my arm around her. Okay, shall I read you a story from our book, Cinderella, for the 999th time? Could you tell me a story out of your head, Bliss coaxed. A fairy story, but without any witches or giants or dragons. Okay then, I'll tell you a story about, about a little girl called Bliss. And a big girl called Lily, I said. And Baxter and Pixie, said Bliss. Well, they're in our story, but they're fast asleep in an enchanted forest. There won't be any witches, will there? No, absolutely no warty old witches. We're fairies anyway, you and me. Bliss and our magic is much stronger than any old witches. Are Baxter and Pixie fairies too? Of course they are. Baxter wears a special pink sequin fairy dress with matching sparkly pink wings. Bliss snorted with last laughter as if I'd told the funniest joke ever. And Pixie wears a little white fairy frock with weeny white wings, only she's hopeless. She's forever crawling around the grass and trying to climb trees in the enchanted forest. So she's always all over grime and grass stains. She's only a baby fairy, so she can't fly properly yet. And Baxter doesn't fly properly. He swoops around and round the tree trunks, throwing acorns at squirrels and trying to catch all the birds. But we fly wonderfully, Bliss. What colour dresses have we got? Well, you have a blue fairy frock. Blue's my favourite colour, said Bliss happily. Yeah, it's a very pretty sky blue colour and you have the most beautiful rainbow wings. You're the prettiest fairy I've ever seen. Bliss pulled the thin wisps of her hair. Do I ever have long golden curls, she asked. Absolutely, way down to your waist and I brush them every morning and tie rainbow coloured rib ribbons in your hair to match your wings. What about you, Lily? Do you have a blue dress too? I nibble a little piece of skin on my lip, deliber deliberating. I don't mind you having blue, Lily. Tell you what, you could wear blue because we're tw twins. See, you and me, Bliss suggested. No, no, I'm the big sister fairy. I have to keep you in order. But I'm always good. You're good here, but you might be a very naughty little fairy in the enchanted forest. You might pull the heads off all the flowers and chase the rabbits and eat all the wild strawberries instead of sharing them with us. So I'll be like Baxter, worse than Baxter. And when you do something really outrageous, like tearing your blue dress and running around in your fairy knickers, singing rude songs at the top of your voice, I shall have to catch you and spank you with my fairy wand. Bliss was rolling around on the sofa, giggling. So what colour is your fairy dress? She spluttered. I think it's purple. Yeah, purple like those pansy flowers. I'll have a very fine, soft, purpley bodice and then a sticking out paler purple skirt. Lots and lots of layers, so it swooshes around me as I fly. My wings are pale purple too, but they shade to dark at their feathery tips and I have tiny, tiny purple pansies in my hair. Oh, how lovely. Can I have purple too, please, please? No, your blue is much prettier and purple won't go with your rainbow wings. You have to be coordinated, Bliss. What does that mean? All your colours have to go together. Baxter is a beautifully coordinated fairy. He's got little dark pink underpants that go with his fairy frock and he wears shiny pink lipstick to match. Bliss was snorting with laughter now, her own face bright pink too. You're so funny, Lily, she said. You will always be my sister, won't you? I mean, really, you won't go off anywhere. I'll always be your big sister, Bliss, and I'll always look after you, I promise, I said. 
Mum is coming back, isn't she? said Bliss. Of course she is. You snuggle down and go to sleep with me on the sofa. And when you wake up again, I bet Mum will be here and she'll be telling us off because we're not in bed. Bliss snuggled down obediently and went to sleep. We woke with a start at dawn as Mum crept through the front door. She found us on the sofa and kissed us both. What are you funny girls doing in here on the sofa? Have you been watching telly half the night? You're very naughty girls. Oh, Mum, Lily said you'd tell us off and you are, Bliss said delightedly. What? You want to be told off, you daft half a said Mum, tickling her. No tickles, no tickles, Bliss begged. Well, you go and get into bed with Baxter and have another little snooze. There's a good girl. I'm not a good girl. I'm a bad fairy, Bliss said. But she trotted off to the living room door and then she turned back. Aren't you coming too, Lily? Lily and I are going to have a special big girls chat together, said Mum. Off you go now or I'll tickle you till you squeal. I'm going, I'm going, said Bliss, disappearing. Ah, Mum said, yawning and stretching. She's a funny little thing, isn't she? Here, Lily, go and make us a cup of tea. You and me need to talk. I went to put the kettle on. Gordon had obviously turned up after all. Mum was in such a good mood. She looked good too, even though her makeup was all gone and her hair tucked back behind her ears. She looked like a girl again, not a mum of four. I felt so happy for her. Well, most of me did. Another deep down, meaner part of me was jealous. We couldn't, I... Why couldn't I ever make her happy like that? Why weren't the four of us enough to make her happy? I poured the tea and took two mugs into the living room. Mum was wandering around doing little dance steps and fluffing out her hair. Here you are, Mum, I said, putting the mugs down. You're a pal. Mum came and sat beside me. Well, is he still the man of your dreams? You bet he is, said Mum. Oh, Lily, I can't believe it. He's so wonderful. I'm just so lucky. Yeah, well, you haven't been very lucky in the past, have you? Are you sure Gordon's truly okay? 100% perfect, I tell you. Well, as far as I can tell at this stage, obviously I need to spend more time with him to make certain sure. That's what I want to talk to you about. Mum took a sip of her tea. Lily, he's asked me to go to Spain with him. What? Don't look like that. Just a little holiday, love. He's flying back tonight and he's asked me to go with him. Isn't that fantastic? But, but what about school? I said stupidly. And we'll have to get passports and how will we afford the aeroplane tickets? Hey, hey, it's not all of us. Don't be daft, Lily. He's not going to fork out for four kids, now is he? It's just me, and I've got a passport from the time I went on the trip to Magaluf, when the twins were tiny. Mikey looked after them then, and he can look after them now. Not Mikey. Look, I know you don't like him, but you can keep out of his way. He's a good dad to the twins, and he's wanting to see them. He said so. He just wouldn't give up his Saturday night with the lads. Mum, please don't leave us with Mikey. Now stop it. There isn't anybody else. It'll just be for a few days. Don't go. Hey, hey, I can't mess Gordon about, love. He's booked my ticket online. It's all done and dusted. I'm going tonight. It's so romantic, just like those films where they whisk you away to Paris for the weekend. Can't you just go for the weekend? Well, this is the weekend, silly. I'm not going for long, only a few days. I'll tell Mikey, Mikey I'll be back before Saturday, just to keep him sweet. Mum, look, don't sit there giving me that look. I really need a little holiday. Haven't been anywhere away for years and years. And it's really doing my head in, stuck here in this dump. You've no idea what it's been like for me, Lily. I don't know. Well, I don't see why. I, I can't have a little holiday like anyone else. I've given up nearly everything to keep you kids happy. And now just this once, I'm going to put myself first. That's not so bad, is it? Couldn't we all go somewhere, Mum? Look, Gordon doesn't have a clue about you lot. I don't want to put him off. He's a young, carefree lad. I'll tell him eventually. Of course I will. He'll come round to the idea and you're all lovely kids, but it's a bit soon to start playing happily families. But we are a family, Mum. Look, just shut it, will you? Here's me on cloud nine and there's you trying to spoil everything. Mum thumped her tea mug down on the table. Now, I'm going to get a bit of shut eye for a couple of hours before the little ones start making a racket. Do you want to come and cuddle up too? Or are you going to sit there and sulk? I'll sit, thanks, I said. Right, see if I care, said Mum. And she walked off out of the room, swaying her hips in her new dress. I sat huddled up, my head on my knees. I decided that I hated Mum. No, of course I didn't really. I hated this Gordon for wanting to take her away. But it was hard, hating someone I didn't even know. Well, I knew Mikey and I certainly hated him. I thought of him crashing around our flat, yelling at all of us and shivered. Even when he was in a good mood, he could never get it right. He wrestled with Baxter, but he was always a bit too rough, forgetting that Baxter was only a little boy. Baxter would go bright red in the face, trying not to cry. And if his tears spilled over, Mikey would jeer at him and call him a wuss. He'd try playing with Glit Bliss, silly card games, but she'd get so nervous and twitchy. She'd lose again and again, hanging her head in shame. Mikey was better with Pixie, even though she was much smaller and not his own daughter. She'd fetch her teddy bears and he'd pretend to feed them, and then he'd turn into a big bear himself and growl at Pixie. She'd scream with delight and beg him to growl even louder. 
but more than once she got so excited she wet herself. I certainly didn't play any silly games with Mikey. He didn't try to play them with me. He never had, even when I was little. Once I heard him say to Mum, that kid gives me the creeps the way she looks at me. He gives me the creeps. I cried for a bit and then wiped my eyes with the back of my hand and went to find Mum. She was curled up in her bed. I got in beside her and tried to cuddle up. Thought you were sulking, she murmured, but she put her arms around me. Here, babe, don't put those cold feet on me, though. They're like little blocks of ice. Mum, I've been thinking. We truly don't need to get Mikey to come. I can look after the kids, easy peasy. Don't be daft, Lily. I can. I did last night and the night before. Yes, but I can't leave you kids on your own for a whole week. It's not a week. You just said it's a few days. Well, I'm not quite sure. We got this cheap one-way ticket. Probably I'll get a flight back Friday or Saturday, but whenever. I can't leave you all that time. If anyone found out, I get thrown into jail for child neglect. It's against the law, babes, so you'll just have to put up with Mikey. Now, let's get to sleep, eh? Mum went to sleep in a few seconds. I lay beside her, clinging onto her with both hands. I just had to hope that she'd change her mind when she woke up, but there was no chance. When Baxter and Bliss and Pixie all came tumbling into the room, Mum woke up and told them straight away that Mikey was coming to look after them. Bliss went very quiet, but Baxter cheered, and Pixie clapped her hands and said, Mikey Growly Bear, Mikey Growly Bear, over and over again. They didn't even seem to be taking it in that Mum was going off on holiday without us. I couldn't take it in either. She wasn't really going to go, was she? Mum often made things up. She once told us she got a job as a singer in a nightclub. She went on and on about it, even saying this man had offered her a contract to make an album. I truly believed her, but it turned out she'd gone to a karaoke bar and sang a few songs there. Another time, I heard her telling some of the mums at school that this photographer had stopped her in the street and been desperate to take glamour photos of her. And she was going to be a page-free girl. I'd been there in the street with her, and it wasn't a proper photographer at all. It was just a silly lad mucking about with his mobile phone. Perhaps Gordon had said something casual about his job in Spain, saying mum should come and see him there sometime, and now she was making it up that he'd definitely invited her, and she'd booked a ticket. I felt a lot better thinking that, especially as mum made no attempt to phone Mikey and fix up for him to come over. Maybe she was simply playing, pretend games, the way I sometimes went up to the top balcony of our flats and stood on tiptoe and pretended I could stretch out my arms and step into space. I felt that if I... If I could only will it hard enough, wings would sprout from my shoulder blades, open up like umbrellas, and carry me over the rooftops. I would soar up above our tower block, away from everyone in peace, just Lily alone. Mum messed around all morning, doing the dusting and vacuuming, lift, letting Bliss faff around with a duster and Pixie ride on the hoover. She put Baxter in charge of sorting the rubbish, but he just put a black plastic bag over his head and ran around pretending to be a monster. Stop it, Baxter. It's ever so dangerous putting a plastic bag on your head. You could suffocate, I said, trying to snatch it off him. Leave him be, Lil. He's just having a bit of fun, said Mum, aiming at my feet with a hoover. But it is dangerous. What if Pixie copied him? What if Pixie copied him? Mum repeated, mimicking me, making me sound horribly prim and silly. Pixie copy, Pixie copy, Pixie copy, Pixie shrieked. See, I said. I see a right old grumpy gut, said Mum, sticking her tongue out at me. Grumpy guts, grumpy guts, grumpy guts, said Pixie, and Baxter ran at me in the black plastic bag, making moaning monster noises at me. I stomped off by myself. I lay on the mattress to draw my dream house in my new pad, but the lines kept going wonky. I flipped through my magazine instead, but the pictures blurred. I put my head in the grubby darkness of my pillow and curled up small, my arms round my knees. I decided to stay like that all day, but Mum had put a chicken in the oven for Sunday dinner. She didn't usually bother to cook, it, cook much, but every so often she roasted a chicken for a special treat. I didn't think I was the slightest bit hungry until I smelled it cooking. By the time Mum dished up the chicken with roast potatoes and peas and carrots, I was ravenous. She only had to call me once and I came running. There you are. We, well, we, you having a little nap, babe? Maybe you won't go, be go, it's going so grouchy now. Come on, sit yourself down and get tucked in. We all sat round the kitchen table eating. Pixie never, never usually sat still. She'd grab a handful of food off her plate and run around the room with it. But now she sat up straight on the bench, scarcely wriggling. She stuck a roast potato on her fork and licked at it as if it was an ice lolly, making little murmurs of appreciation. Baxter stuffed his food down, chewing with his mouth open. Bliss ate daintily, carefully, not careful not to let her chicken touch her potatoes, keeping her peas and carrots separate too, eating one tiny mouthful of each in turn. Mum didn't eat much herself. She just nibbled at a little bit of chicken. Who's going to pull the wishbone with me, she said, hooking it out. Come on then, Lily, pull. I pulled, and the little bone snapped. Oh, you've got the biggest piece. 
You got the wish, said Mum. I clasped the greasy little bone in my hand, closed my eyes and wished hard. Please don't let Mum go on holiday without us. But after dinner, she went to her room and started packing her case. Bliss and I lay on her bed, watching her. Baxter drove his forklift truck under her bed, crawling around in the dust. Pixie staggered about in Mum's high heels, getting in the way. I wish I had a decent bikini, said Mum. Look, Lil, do you think my posh red bra and pants look a bit like a bikini? No, they look like a bra and pants. Oh, well, I'll just have to buy myself a bikini when I'm there. What should I wear for the flight? Should I dress up in the grey dress to look my best or dress down in jeans and a t-shirt, making out it's no big deal? I don't know. Why don't you wear your red bra and pants, I said. Ooh, you still got the hump then? Little Miss Camel, that's you, said Mum. Then she blinked at me earnestly. Please don't spoil everything, Lily. Just wait till you get a boyfriend. Then you'll understand. I'm not ever, ever getting a boyfriend, I said. Well, you can be an old maid then and not have any fun at all, said Mum. It's not fun to go off and leave your kids, I mumbled. I'm not leaving you, you nutcase. It's just for a few days, I keep saying. And Mikey will be looking after you. Shall I ring him now? No, maybe I'll leave it till the last second. Just as I'm going. Then he'll have to come. No arguing. But Mum! And no arguing from you either. I've just about had a bellyful. You shut up. So that's what I did. I was so stupid. I should have argued like crazy. I should have begged and pleaded and cried. I should have frightened Bliss and made her cry too. I should have thrown my arms around Mum. I could have done so many different things to stop her all that Sunday, but I let her carry on packing and have another cup of tea and then do her makeup. She was ready to go, her denim jacket on, her newly washed hair brushed out, bobbing on her shoulders. Okay, now I'll tacky Mikey, she said, dialing. She listened and then frowned. Oh, damn it, it's his voicemail. Mikey, listen, Mikey, it's me, Kate. Hey, you know you were saying you want to see the kids? Well, I've fixed it all up for you. You need to come over to my place as soon as you get this message. I'm going abroad for a few days with my new boyfriend. Yeah, truly. So it's your turn to play daddy for a while. The kids are so excited you'll be coming. Aren't you, Baxter, mate? Baxter gave a whoop. Hear that? Okay, Mikey, don't let me down, will you? Them kids mean all the world to me. Cheers. She clicked her phone off and looked at us, nibbling her lip. I want to talk to dad, said Baxter. No, love, I, I was just leaving him a message, said mum. She looked at me. So, can you be in charge of the kids just till Mikey gets here, Lil? Why does he have to have this phone switched off? Typical. Anyway, you'll be all right, won't you, Lily? He'll come round the minute he gets the message. Mum, you'll be fine. I know you will. And I'll phone you every day, I promise, just to check you're okay. And I'll bring you all a present when I come back. What would you like, Lily? I know, one of them Spanish dancer costumes. A red one, all over ruffles. I don't want any present, I said. Though I'd always loved Spanish dancer costumes. I could see the red one with ruffles and I ached to own it. I want a dancer costume, a pink one, said Pixie. Can I have blue, said Bliss. I don't want a soppy costume, said Baxter, disgusted. No, my little man, I'm going to get you a toy bull, a great big black bull, and you can be the bullfighter, said Mum. Oh yes, a really fierce bull with horns, but I won't be afraid of it, will I? You're not afraid of anything, my Baxie. Now you be a good boy for Mikey and don't tease your sisters, you hear me? Bliss, you speak up for yourself if you want anything, and Mikey will do his best. Pixie, don't be a little pickle, you be a very, very good girl. She kissed each of them and then threw her arms around me. I'll be back soon, Lily. I swear I will. Then she picked up her case and ran for it, out of the door. She didn't even give me a proper kiss. She was just suddenly gone. We heard her heels tap-tapping along the balcony. Baxter and Bliss and Pixie all looked at me. It was as if they just realised what was happening. Mum, come back in a minute, said Pixie. No, she's gone for a week now, nearly, I said. Pixie's bottom lip quivered. No, in a minute, she said. Where's Dad, then? said Baxter, looking around as if he was hiding in a cupboard somewhere. He'll come when he gets Mum's message, I said, my stomach churning. He won't bring his dog, will he, said Bliss. I don't know. Mum, in a minute, Pixie shouted at the top of her voice, over and over, as if she could make it come true if she said it enough times. Shut up, Pixie, I said, picking her up, but she went on bellowing right in my face. Why isn't Dad coming yet? Baxter asked, kicking the table leg. Why did Mum go without us? Bliss said. I don't know, I shouted, startling them all. Even Pixie was shocking into silence. They all looked near tears, even Baxter. For a moment I hated all three of them. I wanted to shout and question and cry. I felt like sinking to my knees and howling like a baby, but I couldn't. I was the eldest. I had to look after them. Come on, you sillies. Let's, let's all do drawing. I'll give you each a page of my lovely new drawing pad, okay? Baxter, you can draw a big scary bull. Bliss, you can draw yourself dancing in a blue frilly dress with those clapper things in your hands, castanets. And Pixie, I'll help you draw. You can use my best crayons, okay? And while you're drawing, we'll all have a bit of chocolate. Mum's got some in the cupboard. I got them all sitting up at the kitchen table, drawing great lumps of chocolate, stoppering their mouths. 
Pixie drooled all down her chin as she scribbled. I'd done it. I'd got them all happy and distracted for the third evening in a row. I tried to join in, drawing a whole troupe of Spanish dancers, but their legs wouldn't go right, kicking out at odd angles while the chocolate covered my teeth and tongue in brown slime. Chapter 4 I kept picturing Mum in my head, meeting up with this Gordon, going off with him on the train to the airport, waiting for her flight. If I was thinking of her, why wasn't she thinking of me? Why didn't she suddenly think, oh my god, I can't leave Lily and Baxter and Bliss and Pixie? I especially can't leave them with Mikey. Then surely she'd say to Gordon, no, I'm sorry, I love you very much, though she's only known him three days, but I love my kids more. I have to go back. I made chicken sandwiches for our tea, then found the little piece of wishbone and held it in my fist, wishing all over again. I imagined Mum suddenly rushing to get the train back. I went through every stage of the journey with her. It was so real inside my head that I almost heard her heels tap tapping back along the balcony. But she didn't come, and Mikey didn't come either. Baxter got more and more restless. He pretended to be a bull himself, his hands curved at the top of his head as horns, and then he ran around after the little girls, butting them. He wasn't really hurting them, but Bliss started crying and Pixie fell over and cried too. You're all stupid sissy girls, you're no fun at all, Baxter bellowed. You wait till my dad gets here, he'll play with me, us boys together, we'll sort you out. Well, he's not here, is he, your precious dad? I'm glad. See, because we don't need Mikey bossing us around, do we girls? I said. Bliss agreed. Pixie wasn't so certain. Growly bear Mikey, she said, and then she started up her maddening chant. I shut them all up by going into the kitchen and fetching down a big tin of peaches from the cupboard. But we've had our tea, said Bliss. We had chicken sandwiches. Well, we can have another tea, if you're all good, I said. Can we have whirly cream too, asked Baxter. We can have two squirts each, I said. Though I'm doing the squirting, Baxter, and you all have to be sitting down properly at the table, quiet as mice. Squeak, 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 said Baxter, being a very loud mouse. We ate our peaches and cream. The kids were meant to savour them slowly as a special treat, but they swallowed them down in three or four gulps and then jumped up on the rampage again. If I could only get them quietened down with food, we'd have eaten everything in the cupboard by ten o'clock. It was half past eight now. I had to face it. Mum wasn't coming back. She was on her plane, maybe flying over our heads right this minute. And where was Mikey? At that exact moment, the phone rang. I ran to it, praying that it was Mum, after all, coming back from the airport. No, it was Mikey. Lily, look. Hand me over to your mum. I've been trying to get her on her mobile, but she's got it switched off. What's all this rubbish about a boyfriend? She's gone on holiday with him. No, she's not. You tell her to cancel all her daft plans pronto. I can't take a week off and look after all you kids. Who does she think I am? Mary Bloomin' Poppins? It just so happens I'm on the coach up to Glasgow at the moment. I'm going to be helping a mate with building jobs for a couple of weeks. So tell her to get her skinny butt back home to look after my kids, okay? But Mikey, what? All I had to say was... She's already gone. That would have been enough. I couldn't stand Mikey, and he couldn't stand me. But I knew he cared about Baxter and Bliss. He had a very soft spot for Pixie, too. If I'd said we were all alone, Mikey would doubtless curse and swear, but he'd call his mate and get off the coach and come all the way back to look after us. But I didn't want him to come. When he was in a bad mood, he frightened us all, even Baxter. He could turn so quickly. One minute he'd be laughing and tossing the kids up in the air. Then one of them would splutter something silly or kick him accidentally and his face would darken, and he'd shout and smack. He hadn't smacked me for years because I was too quick and wary, but I caught him staring at me sometimes, his eyes darting this way and that as he looked me up and down. I knew he was waiting to get me. I didn't want him here with no mum around. Nothing, Mikey, I said. OK, I'll tell mum she can't go. That's right. Where is she? Let me talk to her. I can't. She's busy right now. Busy with this boyfriend? You tell her to keep her mind on my kids. That's what she's there for. I'll tell her, I said and then I pressed the off button on the phone. I could hear the dialing tone. I said into the mouthpiece, I'll tell her, you're a horrible pig and I hate you, and I'm not having you come and look after us. You can't even look after yourself, you drunken slob. You make me sick, sick, sick. Baxter was in the kitchen squirting Pixie with cream, but Bliss was in the doorway. Her mouth was wide open, listening to me. There, goodbye now, I said. I held the receiver over to Bliss. Do you want to say anything to your dad? Bliss backed away, shaking her head. Okay then. I said, and put the phone down. Bliss was staring at me like I'd slain all the dragons, drowned the wicked witches, and chopped off all the ogres' heads in her fairy tale book. So, Dad's not coming, she whispered, breathing out. No, we don't need him, do we? I said. Nope, said Bliss, copying me, and then she looked over her shoulder. Baxter wants him. Oh, Baxter, I said airily, I'll take care of him. I went into the kitchen and grabbed the cream can, clonk it on, clonking it on Baxter's head. 
Stop it. Look at all that cream you've wasted. Poor Pixie. It's not wasted. We can lick it off her, said Baxter, trying to grab hold of her. Don't be so disgusting. Pixie, I'm going to have to dunk you in the bath. Come on, you can all have a bath and we'll play it's the seaside. And we'll put all the ducks and the fish in too. Oh, by the way, Baxter, uh, your dad sends you a big hug and says he can't come this week. He's busy up in Glasgow, but he'll come and see you soon, OK? Baxter halted in his tracks. Dad's not coming, he said. And he suddenly looked as little as, little as Pixie. Yeah, but it's OK. I'm here. I'll look after you. It's going to be ever such fun, I promise. Come on, kids. It's swimming time. Let me run that bath. I herded them into the bathroom, letting them select mad armfuls of stuff to take in the bath with them. A bouncy ball, a plastic doll, empty milk cartons, even a teapot. By the time all three kids were squeezed into the bath too, it was literally standing room only. But that made it better. They shouted and splashed and squealed, forgetting all about Mikey. They really seemed happy to accept that I was in charge. The bathroom got completely soaked and Baxter was so excited he threw all the towels in the water too. So I eventually had to mop them dry with old jumpers. It didn't really matter. He seemed happy enough. When I tucked him up in bed, he did murmur. Is dad coming tomorrow then? No, he's up in Glasgow, remember? I'll be your dad, Baxter. I made my voice go really deep and growly. Now then, son, settle down or I'll give you what for. I didn't sound remotely like Mikey, but it made Baxter laugh and then snuggle down to sleep. Pixie went out like a light, having stayed up way past her bedtime three nights in a row. Even Bliss seemed fast asleep when I crept in later to check on her. I was the only one wide awake. I felt like reading, so I went into Mum's room so as not to waken the kids. This was a mistake. I looked around at all of Mum's things, her jewellery hanging from the mirror, old scent bottles and powder puffs, and makeup scattered messily over her dressing table, a little pile of tights and pants strewn in a corner. I held Mum's big hairbrush and carefully unpicked strands of Mum's blonde hair, then rubbed them together to make one soft little lock. I tucked it in my pyjama pocket and got into her bed to read. The sheets and pillows smelled of Mum's scent. I buried my nose in them, breathing in deeply. I had to sit up properly and start reading quick to stop myself crying. Bliss's old fairy tales were strangely comforting. Mothers sent their children off into wild woods where there were wolves. They locked them up in the top of the towers. They poisoned them with apples. No fairy tale child would so much as raise an eyebrow to mother going off on holiday for a week. Maybe it was no big deal at all. Maybe heaps of mothers did the same and nobody let on. I decided I'd have to be very careful at school tomorrow. But what about Bliss and Baxter? I knew just how much it would worry Bliss. If you told her to keep a secret, she'd clamp her lips together and do her very best. But if questioned, she'd flush a raw red and she'd start trembling. Whereas Baxter could never keep anything quiet. If you specifically told him not to mention something, he'd shout about it at the top of his voice. And what about Pixie? She'd started going to nursery now, and every morning their nice soft teacher sat them in a circle and they had special talking time. Little girls and boys said that it was their birthday or daddy's car broke down on their brother's or their brother's hamster had died. Pixie would be bursting to tell her news. My mum's gone on holiday with her new boyfriend and my stepdad can't come to look after us, so we're all alone. I could just hear her blurting it all out. I was ready for them the next morning. I'd fallen asleep in mum's bed and they all came tumbling in, Pixie just in her t-shirt. She wet her bed, said Baxter sternly. She's dirty and smelly. No, I'm not. I didn't wet my cot. Bliss climbed in and did it, said Pixie firmly. I didn't, I didn't, said Bliss, appalled. I know. Never mind, Pixie. We'll change your sheets. Come in Mum's bed. Have a cuddle just now. But it's late, Lily. We're going to be late. It's half past eight, said Bliss. We have to go to school quick. No, we don't, I said, taking her by the wrist and pulling her into bed with me. We don't have to go to school quick. We don't have to go to school slow, because we're not going to school at all. That made them stare. Is it a holiday, said Baxter. Yes, Hooray, hooray, I said. Bliss was frowning anxiously. I don't think it is a holiday, she said. We've had a half term already. It's our holiday. Mum's on holiday, so we're on holiday too. We can do whatever we like today. No boring old school. Yippee! So we can all snuggle up and have a lovely lie in. Yuck, I'm not doing sissy snuggling, said Baxter. So what are we going to do then? Can we go to Chessington World of Adventures? That's where all the boys in my class go on their holidays. Yeah, well, if you've got the money, Baxter, I'll take you, I said. If my dad was here, he'd take us, said Baxter. I want to go on that ride that goes swoop, swoop, and then turns you upside down. Oh, this ride, I said, grabbing him round the waist and tipping him up so he was dangling in midair. Baxter squealed, and I shook him and then dropped him carefully on the bed. Me now, me now, Pixie squealed. Don't do me, please don't, said Bliss. Yeah, but where will we go, Baxter persisted, his voice muffled by the pillow. 
We'll, we'll go to the adventure playground, I said. Baxter cheered, but Bliss looked worried. What about the big boys? The last time we'd gone there after school, there were seven or eight boys hanging out there, drinking and smoking and swearing as they mucked about in the kid's den. Baxter had run up the ramp, fearlessly to join them, but they'd thrown a lager can at him and pushed him over. I'd gone to rescue him and they'd thrown cans at me too, said all sorts of horrid stuff. When I got all the kids home, I'd sworn we'd never go there again, though Baxter moaned and complained, saying he wanted to go and play with the big boys. The big boys won't be there just now, I said. Will they be at school? Bliss asked. I nodded, though I was pretty sure they weren't the sort of boys who went to school. Still, I knew they stayed up half the night, so they'd likely be fast asleep till lunchtime. And we're really, really, really not going to school, said Bliss. Won't we get into trouble? No, I told you, we're on holiday. Now all go and get dressed. Pixie, I'd better dunk you in the bath. I served them cereal for breakfast and I let them put extra sugar on their frosties. While they were all happily crunching away in the kitchen, I went into the living room and picked up the phone. I dialed Mum's mobile. I wasn't going to tell her about Mikey. I just wanted to tell her we were all okay. And I needed to check she was fine too. But dialing didn't get me anywhere. I just heard a recorded message. I'm sorry, it has not been possible to connect your call. I tried again just to check and got the same message. Mum must have her mobile switched off. Too busy with Gordon, I thought, clenching my fists. Lily? Bliss was standing at the door. I slammed the phone down quickly. Were you ringing Mum? Bliss whispered. She's having a lovely time on holiday and says she hopes we're having a happy holiday too, I said quickly. Bliss, you've got bright purple lips. Baxter poured us some Ribena. You're meant to dilute it. Haven't you lot had enough sugar? Your teeth will be black by the time Mum comes home. Lily, is Mummy, Mum coming back? Of course she is, I said, and I made myself laugh. Honestly, Bliss, you're hopeless. You always have to get in such a state over things. You're such a baby. I was being horrible to her simply because she'd said aloud the thing that was starting to worry me dreadfully. It made me feel momentarily better to pour scorn on her. It was as if I was mocking my own worries, and it might help me them, make, might help them go away. But then I saw Bliss's poor little face, her eyes watery with tears, and I felt terrible. I flew across the room and put my arms around her. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, please don't cry. I don't know how I could have been so horrid. Here, Bliss, you get your own back. Say something really mean and spiteful to me. Go on, say it. Bliss fidgeted. Come on, Bliss. I can't think of anything, she said. But don't be cross again, Lily, please. It's okay. I promise I won't be cross again. Ever? Well, I can't really promise that. All right, promise you won't be cross again this week, said Bliss. I promise, I said, and we stood quietly, together, still hugging hard. Then I heard a great swooshing sound from the kitchen. It sounded horribly like someone tipping the whole jumbo packet of Frosties onto a plate. I will get cross with Baxter, though, I said, running into the kitchen. Baxter, for goodness sake, tip them back in the packet. I wanted to see how many bowl fills there were, he said. I'm still hungry. No, you're not. You're greedy. Come on, help me clear up, you lot. Then we'll go to the adventure playground. Baxter made himself scarce at once, and I had to stop Pixie helping after she dropped a plate. But Bliss was very obliging. Good girl, Bliss. You can take Headless to the playground. Headless was Bliss's favourite cuddly toy. She slept with him, her, with him in her arms, but Mum never let her take him out because he looked so awful. He used to be called Whitey because he was a polar bear, but now he was a sickly yellow-grey. He really was Headless. Baxter had tried to tug him out of Bliss's grasp, and his head had come right off. Mum had tried to sew it back on, but she couldn't stitch it tight enough. His head wobbled alarmingly and fell off again when we were crossing a road, and a car ran over it. Mum wanted to put the rest of the headless in the bin, but Bliss wouldn't hear of it. She loved him more than ever now. He was mangled. I want my teddy, said Pixie. Yes, we can take all the teddies. We can have a teddy bear's picnic. I wrapped all the battered animals in Pixie's old cot blanket and took the rest of the Frosties, a packet of jammy dodgers and a bottle of coke from the kitchen. Pixie ran along beside me, wanting to add all sorts of weird stuff. Let's take a chair for all the teddies to sit on. Let's take the teapot so the mummy teddy can have a tea. Let's take the washing up bowl so we can do the washing up. Oh, let's take the washing up squirty thing so we can make bubbles. Bliss and Baxter could barely talk when they were Pixie's age. They just mumbled together in their own twin language. Started to wish Pixie was a twin too. She was like a little woodpecker drilling into my brain. Still, stopped me thinking too much. I was learning that the trick to stop feeling scared was to keep busy, busy, busy. So I carted the teddies and their picnic to the door and sent the kids off to the toilet to do a wee because I didn't want to get all the way to the playground and then have to trail back almost immediately because of an urgent call of nature. I was actually pulling the front door shut behind us when I suddenly stiffened. The door key. I felt sick. The flat seemed to slip sideways. 
as if there was a sudden earthquake in south-west London. Mum had gone off with her handbag and the keys were in a little pouch inside. Had she taken them with her? I rushed back inside, leaving Baxter and Bliss playing with the forklift truck while Pixie started setting up a preliminary picnic on the doorstep. I looked on the coffee table, on the kitchen worktop, in all Mum's drawers in the bedroom. I couldn't find a spare key anywhere. Mikey still had a set of keys, I knew that, and hated the way he could burst in on us any time he wanted. But he was in Glasgow now, so couldn't help out. What were we going to do? We couldn't stay stuck inside the flat till the weekend, and what if Mum didn't come back then? I knew you could get new keys made, but you had to have another set to copy. You could get a whole new lock with a set of new keys. Folk were doing it all the time on our estate, our estate to keep people out. But that cost a lot of money. We didn't have any money, apart from a few pennies to rattle in an old piggy bank. Come on, Lily, we want to go to the playground, Baxter shouted. The bears are hungry, they're growling, Grrr, said Pixie. I'm coming, I said. I couldn't keep them in. They'd be like wild bears themselves by lunchtime. I put the door on the latch and pulled it closed. I looked up and down the balcony to see if anyone was watching. If any kids saw, they could get in. They'd steal stuff and trash the flat. I stood biting my thumbnail. Still, we didn't really have any stuff worth stealing, and the three kids had done a pretty good job of trashing the flat already, especially Baxter. We still had his purple crayon marks all over the walls and a great hole in the plaster where he bashed into it, trying to skateboard. Bliss hadn't made any marks, but there were lots of discoloured patches on the pale carpet where Pixie had peed, just like a little puppy marking her territory. I gave the door another pull and set off down the balcony. Come on, you lot, I said. I put my finger to my lips as we passed old Calf's flat. We all went on tiptoe, but Calf's got these great bat ears that are always flap, flap, flapping. There was a tap from inside her kitchen window. I pretended not to hear and pushed to where everyone passed, but Calf was at her front door while I was still trudging for the lift. Hey, you kids, she yelled, and she caught hold of Pixie. She moved quicker than a rattlesnake for all she'd got a Zimmer frame. Pixie gave a little squeal. Old Calf kept hold of her firmly with her gnarled old fingers and made ridiculous coochie-coo noises as if Pixie was a little baby instead of a person. How's my little angel then? said old Calf. She's fine. The lift's here. Come on, Pixie, I said urgently. Where are you going? old Calf asked, still with Pixie in her clutches. We're going to the adventure playground and I'm going to be boss of the whole den, said Baxter. I'll shoot anyone who comes near, he said, turning his arms into a machine gun and making mad ack 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 noises. That's not very nice, said old Calf, because he was clearly aiming straight at her. Why aren't you kids in school? It is Monday, isn't it, girly? She said to Bliss. Bliss looked agonised and said nothing. Yeah, it's Monday, but we've got an inset day off school so the teachers can have a staff meeting, I gabbled. Honestly, they never had that sort of thing when I was at school, said old Calf. She looked up the balcony towards our front door. Where's your mum then? Oh, she's just gone down the stairs. She doesn't like to use the lift because it's so smelly, I lied. Yes, it's them wretched lads. They pee there on purpose, said old Calf. She glared at Baxter. Don't let me catch you weeing in the lift, young man. No, I'll wee on you instead, said Baxter. Old Calf gasped. I grabbed Baxter and shook him hard. Oh, wait till I tell your mum on you, said old Calf. She clutched her Zimmer frame and hobbled, hobbled to the edge of the balcony. Where is she then? She said, peering down. Oh, uh, maybe she's gone to buy some cigarettes. We'll catch up with her. Say sorry, Baxter, and come on. I pinched his arm really hard so that he blurted out a mumble that could have been sorry. And then I picked up Pixie and made a run for the lift, Bliss leaping after me, terrified of being left behind. We were in the lift before old Calf could stop us. You hurt me, you mean pig, Baxter whined, examining the red mark on his arm. Yeah, well, I meant to hurt you. All of you. I told you to keep quiet going past old Cass. She'll still be squawking about telling mum when we come back. She might even come stomping along to our flat and then... Then what are we going to do? Tell her to bug off, said Baxter. Stop that silly talk about this minute. Baxter, I said, putting my face up close to his. If she finds out mum's gone, she'll tell someone. Maybe she'll even go down the council office and send a social worker to see us. Well, we'll tell them to bog off, said Baxter, laughing stupidly. Yes, and then they'll lock us all up in a children's home, I said, as we clattered out of the lift. Separate ones, and you'll probably end up in a special strict one for bad boys. Good, see if I care, Baxter shouted, but he was looking scared now. Bliss took hold of his hand, and he didn't pull it away. Mum's coming back by Saturday, she said. Yes, but the social workers will think she's an unfit mother because she left us, I said. You don't get it, any of you, do you? They all stared up at me, eyes big, faces white, and I felt terrible for frightening them so. But it's all right. Everything will be fine. So long as you're good and keep quiet when I say. Now come on, we'll go to the playground.
And that is where we will leave part two of Lily Alone by Jacqueline Wilson. I'll be back soon with the next part of this fantastic story and lots more stories and videos coming your way on my channel very soon. If you'd like to subscribe or hit a like, that's always appreciated. Take care. Goodbye.